Okay, I'm just going to show you the settings for SDR control, which is commercial program, and uh, free ones, WSJTX and JS8 call, using the Mac computer, in my case is a M1 uh, 16 inch MacBook Pro. Um, some people are having issues uh, can, uh, setting it up, so I'll show my settings and some of the things you need to watch out for that could cause uh, some difficulties. Hopefully, this helps. Please subscribe, thumbs up. If you find it useful, it will be appreciated. Thank you. Okay, I'm running uh, WSJTX. I'll turn the volume down. This is the configuration that I started with. Now, the radio is important. You got to select the radio you're not using, which in my case is the ICOM 73, the serial port. That's the one you need to use. I have the baud rate set at maximum, default, 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 cat, data packet, rig, and test. When it turns green, it's good. Test, when it turns red, transmitting, good. And this is the USB. Basically everything else is default. I have not played with it. While this does work, I still prefer the SDR control. But I have it working. For it to work, of course, you need a USB cable plugged into the back of your radio and to your computer. You definitely want to use uh, a cable with the ferrite bead. And uh, you need to go to ICOM and install the drivers. It's available on the ICOM site for Windows. However, for uh, the Mac, it's not available. I have to go directly to SLAB. So do a search for SLAB USB to UART. It will take you to the site and you're able to uh, download it and install for your Mac. Okay, I'm just going to shut this off and launch SDR control. I'm going to go FT8, start, map, I prefer that map, logbook. USB-D, right frequency, you just select it and it'll, it'll set it up. For settings, USB, that's the driver, the same codec, it works. And the rest is just personal information, setting up your call sign, things of that sort. Okay, that's what uh, FT8 sounds like. I'm just using an indoor antenna, but despite that, I do make contacts. Let's see if we caught this one in time. Yep, got connected. There you go. 
takes about 15 seconds for each sequence. Oh, my cat just came in and she wants to be taken care of. Okay, there you go, that quick. We exchange the information. Confirmed and it automatically logs that information right there. I just prefer this program. <laughs> so hopefully uh, showing you my configuration will help. And there is also another option, of course, if you have the 1.42 update for the uh, IC7300, you can then uh, select uh, a config file that ICOM created for FT8. However, I don't, uh, don't use it because I usually like to set it at about 40% of my audio. The uh, ICOM will set it at 50%. Other than that, works fine. Okay, I hope it is JS8 call. Let me go to preferences. That's general. The radio. That's test. Okay. Test. Let's try this one. It works. Okay. You got to select the ICOM 7300. Um, if you used a previous program, you need to turn off the radio and power up again. Otherwise, it will fail to communicate. Things are not too friendly when you're switching to two or the three different uh, programs. Let me just put this in here. Audio, same thing. Okay, frequencies. Save messages, notifications. That's the important part right here, these two. If, if your system has these settings, I suspect there's a conflict. Either another device is using the port or your radio has been connected to another application and you haven't uh, turned off the radio and put it back on. So. That's some of the things I've noticed when I had any issues. Interesting, all that activity. I haven't really played with this yet. Okay, let me quit. And let me see how well SDR connect. It's the only application I find that I can quit other programs. Now I have to restart my radio and it works. The other ones, Ah, uh, you have to fiddle a little bit more. Let me go to a logbook. I can adjust this. Uh, 
I just like to just keep it below so I can actually see the signals that, that is coming in. Let me click on one person here. I'm using an antenna right beside me. <laughs> it's a loaded whip. Oh, so he answered someone else. If I was to not make another call with someone else, and the minute that station transmits to CQ, it will attempt a connection. So, unless he quits <laughs> and shuts down, which I do quite often. So now you've seen three apps. SDR Connect, WSJTX, uh, and JS8 Call, which you can use for chit-chatting. I kind of like this uh, program, I have to admit. Unfortunately, you have to buy it. So you buy one for your computer. If you have the ICOM 705, which has Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, then you can use an iPad and an iPhone. With the ICOM 7300, it's just a laptop or a computer. Okay, hopefully this helps. And what's nice about it, I hit this radio power and it shuts everything down. Great. Driver that I would need for my ICOM 7300. ICOM provides the driver for Windows, but not for Mac, so I have to go to Silicon Labs and there they've also provide uh, drivers. This is 602. Let me see what version I have here. Oops. 602. And another thing I found out, you have to leave this driver in your application folder, at least for the Mac. Otherwise, if you delete it after doing the installation, It won't work. So, yeah, this is required. If you don't, you're going to have problems. Okay, there's one more setting which you need with some of the applications, anyways. And if you launch in your utility folder on the Mac Audio MIDI setup, select uh, the USB audio codec 1. You need to select two channel 16 bit 4800 kilohertz or, or 4800 hertz. Okay, for both of them. So that's another requirement. And I believe it's for uh, <clears throat> WSJTX, at least uh, that's what they're asking. But it works with everything, so. Try that if you're having issues with audio. That's what you need to do. I'm enjoying my ICOM 7300. I know I was trying to decide whether I go between the 705 or the 73. For bass, 73 definitely was the way to go. However, I do have a dual band uh, 50 watt VHF UHF uh, ICOM radio, which I'm considering replacing it, or we'll probably sell or trade. Um, for the ICOM 705. So this way I can use it for mobile and off-grid operation, camping, things of that sort. Uh, there's no rush for it. It's a wish list. <laughs> we'll call it that. Okay, off to the next segment. Okay. Another area where you can have problems. <laughs> you have, uh, if you're running the latest uh, Mac OS, Sonoma, and as you know, Apple had pretty good in uh, securing a computer 
giving you the option to c control a lot of the installations. <clears throat> so, you need to turn on permissions such as this one right here, sys control, which is required for uh, JS8 call and WSJTX. You don't have that on, you're gonna get this memory issue error coming up. So be sure you got that turned on. It's important. And there's also probably permissions you gotta do. Privacy and security. You have to decide if you wanna give them uh, your, your location, uh, access to the network, if it's uh, Bluetooth, and you gotta give them permission of Bluetooth, so check those things, the applications that you're using that you turn those on, if they're required. Okay, off to the next segment. RFI, noise. Fortunately, in my case, because I had a proper USB cable with a built-in ferrite. However, these are tools you definitely need to have. And I did order this kit, it's expensive. I have the coax noise filter, the one right here, the DC filter, and I have the, all these other filters. However, I don't have a remote speaker, so I didn't need to use it. This is the USB filter, which I put in on one end, while the other one I had a filter. This is a, a precaution. What you can do is just get these ferrite beads. I will show you. Equipment, coax noise filters. Huh, that's not what I was looking for. All right. There you go. By the time you buy a bunch of these, you might as well <laughs> get yourself a kit. I have ordered it, of course. Uh, it's not to bring in from the States. You have the US Canadian conversion. And I, I think I even had to pay a little bit of duty, if I recall. I'm not sure now. But it's a tool, it's worth having. Now you can get these cheaper from China, but then you don't know what you're getting. Polymer engineers, they seem to guarantee the frequencies and so forth that it will work with. And if you have a nano, VNA, which I do, a couple. I could even test to see how good they are. So hopefully this information helps for those who are experiencing noise. Okay. Your ICOM, of course, have to be set up. My accessory USB, I believe it's default. And the accessory USB AF output, 50%. I have a squelch on, but I could turn that off. There you go. Beep squelch, I got that turned off. 50%, 50%, USB mod level. That's the one I set to uh, 40%. Data off mode, back to mic and accessory mode. And of course, you have to have CIV. Um, it's ICOM when I use their configuration will switch it to auto, but 
I like using it in that speed. So this is the address, it has to be the 94H. So I'm just kind of scrolling so you see what's required. Yeah, that's, a, that's it. Everything else works fine. So hopefully, verify that your radio was set up that way. Okay, this is what it looks like using the FT8. As you can see, my noise level is zilch, so I can work these weak signals. Propagation is not that great. And let me do a transmit here. Give it a second. It has to uh, wait for his turn. I think it's coming up about now. There you go, automatic SWR. There's my ALC. SWR is flat. That's it. If you're experiencing noise on your receiver like an S3, you need to find out the source. First thing I would do is turn off breakers, circuit breakers in your house. Find out if there's any devices that's causing the noise. I know LEDs are really bad for that. And also your antenna. Check that you have a choke on your feed line to your antennas. Because when you're transmitting, you, you have really th three wires, not two because you're gonna have one current coming back on the shield. So that needs to be choked. And depending on the, on the antenna you have, especially long wires and stuff like that, you may need to place it at a specific uh, position like quarter wave or maybe even at the, at the very connection. Strongly recommend using chokes, even on half dipoles, half wave dipoles. So that's some of the things you need to do.